So we've rendezvoused at Stonebridge Park in northwest London near Wembley and we're picking up the threads of a walk we did 10 years ago that ended uh, in an industrial estate not far from the Stonebridge Park. Quite where we'll end up today and at what time, I have no idea. This is one of the great adventures of urban rambling. Nick spotted something. What have you spotted, Nick? I thought it might have been the Metropolitan Waterboard Water Main running through here and then up between the houses and under the railway line. But I'm not at all sure it is. I think it's more over that way. But I've kind of lost it for a while. Well, so, have we, so have we left the water more. Well, water when main, we go it? into the um, uh, Abbey Trading Estate, We'll see the course of the water main. We decided to go and see what's left of Twyford Abbey, or if it's still there in fact. We'd read about it in Just Beyond London by Gordon S. Maxwell, published in 1927. I recently spent a day in a country monastery where the monks dwell in an old world mansion deep embowered among the trees, where the rooks in the giant elms that skirt the estate chant their own orisons in a rival community, where the meadows around the house are knee deep in hay and the home farm stands near the little wood that leads down to the sloping banks of a small but attractive river which flows mainly along by one side of this monkish pleasurance. John? I think that's it there. Twyford Abbey? Yeah, so it's just down there, basically. On the other side of the railway, there's the railway crossing and there's Twyford Abbey and there's the church. The building Twyford Abbey, which adjoins the North Circular on the other side, uh, was built in the early 19th century. And for many years, it was an unofficial abbey run by the Alexandrine Brotherhood. Uh, effectively, it was an old people's home. West Twyford, of course, is mentioned in the Doomsday Book, as is a little brook that formed the boundary of the uh, estate which we will see over yonder. You may notice from my delivery here that my uh, local history is, my sense of local history is less than adequate. They've left the doors open which alters the air pressure inside the building and affects the, uh, the structure. Probably it's infested with my dear friends the pigeons who, much as I love them, aren't going to do the building much good. And over on the far side, running along the wall by the old farm to the abbey, is the North Circular Road and I still meet people who say they can remember seeing cows grazing in, in the grounds of the Abbey. Now it's a common place that you hear people claiming they've seen cows grazing here and there but it sounds quite plausible to me in this case. What can you see Nick? Lots of dead giant hogweed stems and muddy water and a row of poplars and the remains of the old dairy. But when I was last here about eight years ago, there were lots of outhouses from the home farm, which have now completely disappeared. All gone, all gone. This is the Abbey grounds, Twyford Abbey grounds. Twyford Abbey grounds, yeah. We are, aren't we? Yeah. 
What's this building here? I think this is the dairy or just some sort of outhouse for the farm, something like that. As I said earlier, there was a lot more here five, six, maybe seven years ago. I wouldn't go upstairs if I were you. I don't think the floors are safe, uh, to put it lightly. Mm. Okay. photograph but where do you think someone was sleeping rough here you see the um the bedding as, as we came in there was some bedding the monastic farm with its whitewashed cottage and buildings and the picturesque farmyard is a pleasant spot the monks are good husbandmen yeah. and when we were there were busy building a new rick from the new mown hay from the meadows that lie on the south side of the house and form so pleasant a vista from the terrace where the monks and the gentlemen inmates often foregather. The farm, if small, is well stocked and supplies the community with produce in the way of milk, pork, poultry, eggs and vegetables. The cows, now grazing in a meadow nearby, and the pigs are well housed in brick sheds, and the runs are full of fowls, turkeys, geese and ducks, while many others wander at will over the farmyard and meadows. Five miles away lay the largest city in the world, the centre of the greatest empire in the history of mankind, and yet not only were we surrounded by the peace of an old-time monastery, but as far as the sights and sounds that met our eyes and ears went, in the heart of rural England as well. My batteries are really low. This is incredible, isn't it? Yeah. So what do we reckon? Was this like a, a barn, I suppose? A yeah, cow house, I guess. Yeah. So those people who said they, could, they saw cows grazing here, they may have been um, speaking the truth. Yeah. It's amazing to think of a cattle shed being so close to the North Circular, the North Circular. Road. Yeah. But it also sort of uh, illustrates the intrusion of the North Circular Road and its attendant growth suburbs into what was previously rural land. Just that those dear little animals lived here. You, these kind of these kind of finds are becoming rare. rare That's what I was just saying. Mm. They really are. Yeah. All the huge tracts of brownfield site, all gone. All gone, and no one has, has ever bemoaned it. Mm. I actually thought of keeping a kind of encyclopedic record and just producing a book that just listed every place but I thought actually you just don't know all the places by any means so yeah you know but some you know uh, it's what Boris Johnson now calls uh, areas of opportunity yeah because he's another one a areas of opportunity for whom kids yeah. the sheer arrogance of those people <laughs> My favourite simile is to compare London to an octopus whose tentacles are over suburbia, stretching in an ever-widening radius. May they for many more years miss this peaceful spot by the Brent. It is a little bit of real country still, a forgotten corner that I hope will never be remembered by the builder. <laughs>